What's up guys, real quickly, I want to apologize. I know this is supposed to be my August video and it's coming out really late, but in September's next week, but I've been busy. And secondly, and more importantly, related to this video, I know I mentioned how the reformatting line isn't technically dying, but it's drastically changing. And I think the spirit of it is completely diff different than what it was created for. So that's what I mean when I say RIP. Anyway, hope you like the video. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy DR2727. Shout out to my Transformers Collectors 112 Scale Collector, whatever you collect, shout out to you. And this month's video for August 2022 is RIP to MMC's reformatted line. And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, the downfall, and what's next for MMC and why fans of MMC should be a little leery. Full disclosure before we get into the good, the bad of the reformatted line. I had pretty much every reformatted line figure up until and including the torn. I think after that, I kind of was, it took so long for them to reproduce the other figures that I kind of switched out all my MMC figures for the Iron Factory equivalent. So I just want to put that out there before we get into it to be full, fully transparent. Let's get started. MMC's reformatted line is a chug scale line that started in 2013 with the first release being Terminus Hexatron or Six Shot and it lasted up until this year 2022 with the last quote unquote last release being D Self or their version of Death of Swords. And it pretty much was an IDW based line that did have some one offs and we'll get to both of those in a little while. But it was pretty much a line that complemented Hasbro, kind of the generations figures that people love so much with an IDW flair to it. And it's spe specifically, I won't say specifically, it focused mostly on more than meets the eye lost light line, which People who are faithful viewers of this channel know that I voted that my favorite Transformers fiction of all time in my video two months ago. And in my personal opinion, the reformatted line is what got MMC their rabbit following. Like if you rate the most popular Transformers companies, especially third party companies, MMC is going to be number one or two, depending on what you think of fans toys. And I think a large part of their popularity is because of the reformatted line and how well it was received. And that leads us to talk about the good of the reformatted line. And first off, they started with like really high quality figures. And they, most of their figures are really high quality, but that Terminus Hexatron and that Predator King, that Feral Rex, they were definitive figures. And for me personally, Terminus Hexatron was my second third party figure I owned, and I was blown away by it. And it kind of see many third parties being better than official. Like that Terminus Hexatron was better than a lot of Masterpiece figures at the time. And then they came back with Feral Rex and that figure just blew the game away like the sculpt the paint everything and so i think that they hit those two home runs and i think everybody was clamoring for more and you know it was kind of the rise of you know getting these modern figures that we love you know the old figures with a modern look and also i think that another thing they did that was really smart they hitched their wagon to the idw comics which have a insanely devoted fan base and i'm one of them it's not that big a fan base but it's an insanely devoted fan base and i think that for them to hitch their wagon to that comic book line from the you know more than meets the eye lost like kind of to the other the records and uh, last stand of the records and kind of the whole idw slash dreamwave universe i think that was an insanely smart move and i think it blew our minds that not only were we getting figures from those comics we were getting really good figures at that time and i think they pretty much produced at a high clip and some of the figures they made are just drop dead knockouts and like i said the terminus hexatron the feral rex the megatron stood out the megatron stood out where you had multiple looks for them the DJD, like the fact that we actually got a DJD, and they even did Nickel in the Pit. Um, they did a, they, you got an IDW lockdown. Who would ever thought you would get an IDW lockdown? You got a Rollbuster, you got a um, Titanica, I think that's her name. You, they just gave you a whole bunch of stuff. Um, um, Hot Rod, um, I can go on and on about the great figures they gave. Overlord, which was actually my figure of the year one year. <laughs> I mean, they just knocked it out of the park with a lot of their figures. And they it's like they were listening to the community at the time. I mean, and they pushed the boundaries, right? I already mentioned that Megatron, they gave two looks. Nobody had ever thought of that before. But they also did a Skylinks, a Skylinks that was two individual figures and it combined. I don't think nobody did that. Plus they did the first two pack with Nickel and the Pit and also that Chrome Dome and Rewind. Like they just, they just stepped up what third party was making at the time. And they also built an environment 
and world building with the comic book. I think that having the comic books and instructions included in every reformatted figure was a stroke of genius, especially with IDWs when it was based on the comic. To have your own comic to add on to that world and to build into that whole fiction was genius. And the iconic box art. I think they did a good job marketing. I just think they did a great overall job with the reformatted line. And even though I just spent about five minutes gushing about the reformatted line, out of every rose, right, like a thorn comes. And I think that the bad of the MM, of the MMC reformatted line is two things. One is being out of step with the fiction. And I praised them for riding that IDW wave, and I think that was genius. But the problem was the figures came out so far after that wave. And I think that for all who don't know, IDW um, isn't making Transformers comics anymore. So I... Wonder how long can a toy line last when the primary fiction isn't being made anymore and the fiction itself was only popular to a small group of the fans. So I think that that was one of the problems with sustainability of the line. But that wasn't the main problem. The main problem is that MMC operates like a business. What Jay-Z said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. And yeah, this is a fandom. And hey, yo, guys, we're fans and fans. But MMC throw all that out the window. They move like a business supposed to move. And what I mean by that is, one, they're always making figures with a second figure in mind. And I think that's a huge problem. Like, And I think that they sacrifice quality to get double molds. And I'll show you like that world figure that they use as turbine, that... um. Lockdown and Cyclonus, which neither one of them were good. And I think that, that was the dick to the um, Road Buster, that was Titanica. And there's, I'm, I'm sure there's a few more, but those figures didn't turn out as good as they should have because they were using those to make, you know, instead of doing the original unique mold, they were you trying to do two for one mold. So those characters, those key characters, the world Cyclonus, didn't look the way they were supposed the Road Buster didn't look the way they were supposed to look because they were trying to do, make sure they got a close enough figures so they can do a remote and that kind of hurt the cachet of the brand along with kind of throwing some figures in the line that didn't necessarily fit into the line like this is supposed to be an idw line and i know it started off with six shot and fair and on um, predator king but them sticking that insecticon um, in the reformatted line which did not belong and were not good figures at all them putting skylinks in the line which is debatable if it could be in the line to them even shift and focus toward the reformatted line with the Optus Knox and the Optus Pixies, which, you know, are great figures, but they don't necessarily fit in the line. So, like, for people who collect the line, and when I say the line, I'm reformat, I mean, like, if they've done 30 releases, 25 of them have been IDW based figures. So, I would think you were sticking that IDW pocket, but if you're going to be those one off figures, if you have figures you're not so sure about where to put them, you just stick them in. A line that makes the whole line look bad. And I think they did that a couple of times. And besides doing that, not giving you some of those key figures. So if you look at like a spot on, if you look at the whole line, each figure in the line, and each figure represents a spot on a production run. Instead of them doing the Insecticons, instead of them doing the Skylinks, even though they were well received, you could have did more figures in the line. Like some key characters, like we're mentioning like a Ratchet. Like a getaway. And I know Make Toys did the swerve in the tailgate, but you could always do a swerve in the tailgate. We need a skids for that line. Like some of these key core characters, they should have done. You could even got away with doing the shockwave. He was the villain in the um dark energy on universe. But of course the scavengers, but time has moved on so fast that a lot of these figures, the passion that we had for those characters has kind of faded. And this is kind of my warning for all MMC collectors for their future brands. I know that they are shifting reformatted to kind of this specialty line. And they're also doing this Ocular Max kind of the female characters line. I know they did the female torn. I think they got a female G2 Megatron come up. So, you know, one, the novelty of those lines, like how long would that last? Because it's not tied to any fiction. It's just them saying, hey, here's something cool and different with a character you already know or here's a character you know with amazing articulation and i don't know how many of those figures a if you're looking at the optus pixies and optus knox line how many characters can have that same articulation and still transform and if you're in that new line with the female characters how many characters can they do that that's just simply cool one off spins or whatever and how many can they do before they realize we have to get our money on this mold because if you look at that Megatron, it's just the torn remolded or whatever. So how many of those characters can they do? So I want to, you know, caution you guys who are looking forward to this stuff. I'm glad you're looking forward to it, but just be leery because I don't know how long 
those lines can go on. And of course, with MMC being a business, it's going to run like a business. If it don't make money, they couldn't bake. So like, just be careful about that. And while I applaud them for the reformatted line, I do think that some of the negatives that their business practices, they kind of doom this line is going to doom their future lines. But let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching as always.